lean into more. Russ, what made Denver a, a destination that, that you wanted to end up in this summer? Um, just a culture, uh, looking out, you know, from outside looking in. Uh, team has always been at the top of the Western Conference. Um, you know, always in the hunt to win a championship, always uh, play the right brand of basketball. I'm always, you know, at this stage of my career looking to play the right way regardless of the wins or losses, understanding that playing the, the, the proper brand of basketball allows uh, everyone to kind of get involved, allows the team to grow, and also allows you to be able to win at the highest level. And um, the Nuggets, uh, you know, has been doing that for years, and I'm grateful to be here. Hey, Ross. Oh, welcome. Um, you have played with a lot of talented guys uh, all in, in your career, but what are, what are your thoughts about, of course, Nikola Jokic before you played with him? Have you talked to him? Um, what do you think, what are, what are your expectations, expectations to be with him in the court? Um, honestly, just just to, to be on the floor with him is a, a, a grateful honor, and, a, and, a, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, and... You know, he does so many different things on the floor um, that allows other people to be great. And I'm just happy to be able to be a part and not playing against him um, or scouting against him. And I'm able to kind of see his greatness up close and see the things he's able to do, um, not just on the court, but off the floor as well. And uh, I'm grateful for that. Russell, Russell, you talked about the, the culture here. I'm curious if there was anyone on the team that you spoke to in the off season to, to kind of get a feel or a read on, on what it's like here? Um, I talked to a multitude of people, but primarily uh, I talk to DJ a lot. Me and DJ are, are close and, um, you know, we talk about a lot of different things, but the culture and, and how things were here, um, you know, he kind of springboarded that conversation. And, you know, from then on, I kind of talked to everybody else as well. Russ, uh, P Calvin Booth was saying that you maybe had a relationship with Nicola. People, that's kind of been the talk. Where does that yeah. stem from? What's it been like to get to know him over the years? Um, I think just competing at the highest level, um, respect level, I think. Um, I had a utmost respect for Nicola and the things he's been able to do in his game thus far. Um, and I think it's, it's vice versa. And us having that allows us to, you know, mesh immediately immediate conversations, understanding uh, what it takes to win. And obviously, he's won the championship, so he knows exactly what it takes to win. And uh, I'm here to be able to hopefully bring another one here. Well, Russ, on that right here, how, how important is that championship to you? You've accomplished so much. Yeah. Where, where, where is that in terms of your desire and motivation? Um, honestly, it's, it's, I think, this time of year, everybody's going to say they want to win a championship. Everybody's going to say the same thing. Um, it's not like uh, live or die, to be honest. Um, I love playing the game of basketball. I love having fun. I love using this platform to do other things. Um, and winning a championship is very difficult and very hard, and a lot of things have to go your way. I think as long as we, as a team, uh, put our best foot forward, we can live with the results. And if that's the championship, then I'm grateful for that. And if it's not, I'm also grateful for the opportunity and being able to learn through a process that – uh, you know, you may not be able to encounter for years. Uh, Russell. What's that? It's my dog. Russell, um, two, two of the things that, you know, the Nuggets kind of missed last year was rim pressure, off the dribble, uh, in, tra in, in, half, in the half court, and yeah. rim pressure in transition. Um, when you make the decision, you know, kind of in free agency, was did that play into it? Uh, well, and because those are two things that you have no. done, you know, traditionally over the course of your career, that those are kind of some of the strengths of your game. Um, yes, and also um, just understanding, you know, what the team and the coaches will ask of me. Um, that conversation is yet to kind of be had, but I do know uh, some of my strengths and things I can bring to a team. Um, and rim pressure, not just for scoring, but pace and, and understanding I can get in the paint to create for other people um, to me is what I'm most forward looking, most uh, likely looking forward to. Russ, you had a very busy off season with Westbrook Academy. Can you yeah. just explain to a lot of people what that process was about? Uh, it's years in the making, man. Um, I'm grateful for um, the opportunity to be able to bring um, a school, not just for kids, but for 
families wrap around services to the South LA area, growing up in the inner city of Los Angeles, being able to make an impact in other ways, but education is a huge part of um, you know, the underserved community, especially in Los Angeles. And um, I'm just grateful and, and happy that all the kids are able to kind of endure all the uh, different services that we do have at Westbrook Academy. And I'm grateful for the, uh, you know, for the future to come and more to come you know, for those students. And, you know, it's a blessing to be able to do something like that, especially in Los Angeles. Russ, here on your right, how do, you, how do you see your role on this team? And I guess, has it been a fun challenge as your career, you know, you get up there in years and, and it changes what's asked of you and you have to figure out how you fit in best versus, you know, when you're winning MVPs and running the show? Yeah, man, you know, I, I'm, I'm a team guy. Whatever the coach asks of me, that's what I'll do. So um, whatever that is. Um, and we practice tomorrow, we get closer to the season, whatever my role is, whatever is needed for me to be able to win games, that's what I'll do. Hey, Russell, uh, like Kobe Bryant in the past, you've always been kind of public enemy number one in the Denver area in terms of uh, fans love and hate. What's it going to be like playing in front of a Denver crowd that will pump you up? You know, I don't know. I don't know if it's public enemy number one. I think I, I, this is how I look at it. Um, over my course of my career, a lot of I've been booed and all that stuff everywhere else, but I, I, I take it a sign of respect, just like the late Kobe Bryant. Um, when people boo you, they understand it's a, it's a level of respect, and it's a reason. If people don't say anything, then you should be worried. And for me, um, I take it as a level of respect, and I'm, I'm grateful now to be a part uh, of the loud and yell and screaming, and I'm, my job is to make them scream louder um, and have fun and enjoy the game. So. Russell, joining a point guard room with Jamal Murray, just what's that, what are those conversations? What are those, those moments, especially like on and off the court, do you think are going to be like just with somebody <clears throat> as competitive as him and as you? Um, it's going to be great. My job is to be able to push Jamal to be the best he can be um, and play the highest level he can. He's an unbelievable player, and he has, still has so much room to get, get better in, in a lot of areas, and I'm grateful to be able to be here to be able to, to help them along the journey um, and vice versa. Uh, I'm always open and understanding and be able to learn from other guys as well because that's how you expand your game. That's how you stay around longer. And I, I'm grateful and looking forward for the opportunity. Russ, Russ we just saw Peyton called you, called you his idol. Yeah. Um, how excited are you to tap into his potential and be around him a lot more yeah, as Cali guys? Uh, very excited. You know, Peyton is excited. Um, he's, he's young. Uh, he's ready to compete, and my job is to better teach him some of the things I've learned over the years, understanding how important it is to be able to not take a day, a game, a practice for granted, and understanding how important this part of his life is and have an opportunity to be able to play in the NBA and understanding what that entails for him and his family. And uh, I'm going to tap into him all areas, not just basketball, but life. Um, and, you know, that's a part of leadership as well, so. You've touched on the leadership aspect a couple of times. This is a pretty young roster in a lot of areas with guys who were even growing up watching you play yeah. earlier in your career. I, what's it kind of just been like to be around all of those guys so far, even at workouts in that kind of setting? And, and it's good. You know, it's, uh, it's probably a little, this is probably last year, not so much. This year is probably the first time I've heard like a lot of different stories from some of the young guys of when they saw me play when they were in high school or when they saw me play. Uh, years ago, so hearing some of those stories is one inspiring for me. I, I, I love to just know and understand and, and understand people's journey and, and how they're how they're why. Um, so it just it, it just gives me more confidence and it pumps me up more to be able to tap into them more um, and, and lead them in a way that um, they've never been led before. So, Russ, have you? Yeah. Russ, have you and Nicola talked about the triple-double race at all? Uh, how no. do you anticipate your game meshing in that regard? No, we have not um, have not had a conversation about it. Um, and I don't know if there's a race or not, but <laughs> we have not talked about it at all. Nicola is, um, you know, the best player in the world, and he's playing at the highest level. Um, and... All we care about, and he probably tell you the same, is, is winning basketball games, and, and that's it. Russ, you, 
you talked about mentoring Peyton and trying to help him along and teach him about the game and life. Did, did you have a player when you came into the NBA that helped you along, that, uh, uh, that, that showed you the way, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, when I was in Oklahoma, Nick Collison uh, was, uh, we're still friends to this day, uh, helped me in so many different ways. And, you know, he probably doesn't even know this, but just off the floor, how he manages Everything else besides basketball allowed me to be able to be, uh, you know, a good basketball player at the time. And uh, I'm grateful for, for him and his knowledge that he shared with me as a, as a young player coming into the league. Uh, you, you're glad you're not scouting against Nicola anymore. Yeah. What was the experience of trying to scout him like on previous teams that you've been um, Good luck. That's it. You just hope that he misses, or I hope it's nothing you can do, uh, which is, you know, you want to be able to be on the team with somebody that, that's literally unguardable, and I'm grateful to be on this team, so. You're known as pretty intense. Yeah. Um, have you mellowed at all over the years, or are you going to rage to the to your last breath? <sighs> Let me think. I'm never changing. I'm not going to change who I am. Uh, I'm not going to change anything about me. Um, my intensity, and I think that the people confuse like intensity with competitiveness. And like when I compete, like I don't know, when I'm on the floor, I don't, I don't want to be walking around, shaking hands, kissing babies. I don't really want to do that. I'm there to, excuse my language, but kick some ass. Um, and besides the off the floor, I'm chill, I'm mellow, I'm not as intense as you may think. Um, I just like to have a good time and have fun. But when I am competing, I want to compete at the highest level. Um, and that part of me will never change as long as I'm competing uh, in this game. And I'm grateful for the opportunity and, um, you know, the rest will go on history. Appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.